All right, thank you very much, Matt. Well, happening today, Alabama kicks off around 2.30 against Cincinnati in the college football playoff semifinal at the Cotton Bowl in Arlington, Texas. And then Georgia and Michigan follow in the other semifinal at the Orange Bowl. Joining us now to offer his insight is longtime college football insider Brad Edwards, formerly of ESPN, now author, of, by the way, of the new book, Dynasty by the Numbers. Brad, good to see you this morning. Good morning, Mike. How is everything? Everything's going well so far. Uh, it's going to, be, going to be interesting what uh, transpires later today. But let's let's talk about the last time Alabama lost in a semifinal, if I'm not mistaken. That was the first year of the playoff when they lost to Ohio State, uh, who was starting a third-string quarterback at the time. That was a bit of a shocker. Do you see any ingredients for a shocker in Texas today? You, you know, the, the biggest ingredient for a, a shocker would be Alabama itself. And that this is a team that we've seen on – several occasions this season play down to its level of competition. Now, I'm not saying Cincinnati isn't a good team and that Cincinnati isn't better than Auburn and LSU and Florida and some of the teams that, that Alabama did basically play down to the wire. Um, it, it's not like it would be shameful to be in a close game with Cincinnati, but the point is Alabama has shown against lesser competition than this that it could come really close to losing. And, and so I think that's the question. What Alabama team is going to show up today? If it's the one that, that we saw in the SEC championship against Georgia, then Alabama should be fine. If it's the one that showed up at Jordan-Hare the week before, Alabama could be in trouble. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. You know, earlier this week, we had former Outland Trophy winner Barrett Jones join us, and uh, he was really talking about the matchups between Alabama's receivers against those Cincinnati defensive backs, a couple of them uh, NFL prospects. When you look at the numbers, how do you see that matchup playing out? Yeah, that, that obviously is the one that, that jumps out when you're looking at Alabama and Cincinnati. Alabama's strength uh, is, is its passing game on offense, and Cincinnati's strength is its pass defense. And it, just from a, a statistical standpoint, Cincinnati defensively is outstanding against the pass. They, they rank number one in the nation in defensive pass efficiency. Uh, second in the nation in pass yards per game allowed. There are a number of categories where they rank really high. That doesn't quite give you full context just because it's not taking into account the competition they're facing, which hasn't been great in the American Athletic sure. Conference. But one thing that just kind of jumps out at me, the most that any quarterback has thrown for against Cincinnati this season is 250 yards. No quarterback has thrown for more than 250 yards against them. Bryce Young averages 332 per game. So, I mean, to say that, that Cincinnati has not faced an offense close to what Alabama's is going to throw out there is an understatement. Uh, but Cincinnati's very capable. They've got some good players. You don't put up numbers like that. I don't care who you're playing if you're not good in that facet of the game. Yeah, and let's throw up some of those numbers you were just talking about on the screen there. And you, you see what the Cincinnati's defense has been able to do. Uh, Luke Fickle has been known to, you know, coach great defenses. It's not like they don't have players. You know, usually when you're think, facing some of these group of five teams, uh, they don't have the depth necessarily. But we're talking about one game where they just got to be better than the other team. Yeah, look, I'm sure Barrett mentioned it yesterday, which is, is that the injury situation with John Mechie um, presents a major question mark for Alabama's offense. I mentioned what Bryce Young has done this season. Well, almost all of that was with John Mechie out there on the field. What's it going to be like if they don't have a second person step up opposite of Jamison Williams? Uh, you, you know, you mentioned that Cincinnati has uh, all America caliber cornerbacks. And if those guys can manage to, to do a pretty good job of taking Williams out, mm -hmm. will someone else step up? It doesn't have to be a wide out. It could be a tight end, could be both tight ends. But Alabama needs to find someone else in the passing game that they can target outside of Jamison Williams, because you'd think that given the talent Cincinnati has in the secondary, they probably do a better job than certainly that Georgia did in the SEC championship game of being able to take him away to some extent. At the same time, though, I think bowl season has gotten to a really bad point with the number of players who are choosing not to play, the number of coaches that are moving around. I mean, all of this create, and I'm not saying it affects the SEC a lot more than it does other conferences. But I just think in general, it's so much harder uh, to really identify the source of motivation for a lot of these bowl teams. And that's why you see some really unexpected results. So I don't necessarily think that that's a bad sign. For Brad Edwards, we always appreciate it. We hope to talk to you after this, uh, see, depending on how things go and uh, maybe wrap up things up. By the way, uh, if you want to get the book, tell folks where to get the book. 
Yeah, the book's called Dynasty by the Numbers. It's about Alabama's dominance under Nick Saban, and it kind of quantifies it through a lot of numbers, charts, and graphs, and you can get it on my website, BamaDynastyBook.com. All right, thank you, Brad. Appreciate it. Happy New Year. Now it's time to go to Sheldon.